Does the Prime Minister agree that any politician who seeks to avoid the taxes they owe in this country is not fit to be in charge of taxpayer money? Well, Mr Speaker, I'm pleased to make my position on this matter completely clear to the House. The issues, the issues in question occurred before I was Prime Minister. With regard, with regard to the appointment, with regard to the appointment of the Minister without portfolio, the usual appointments process was followed. No issues, no issues were raised with me when he was appointed to his current role. And since I commented on this matter last week, more information has come forward. And that is why I have asked the independent adviser to look into the matter. Now, I obviously can't prejudge the outcome of that, but it is right, but it is right that we fully investigate this matter and establish all the facts. Mr Speaker, he avoided the question. I think any, anybody watching would think it's fairly obvious that someone who seeks to avoid tax can't also be in charge of tax. Yeah. Yet, for some reason, the Prime Minister can't bring himself to say that or even acknowledge the question. Nope. Yeah. Now, last week, the Prime Minister told this House that the chair of the Tory party had addressed his tax affairs in full yeah. and there was nothing to add. This week, after days of public pressure, the Prime Minister <laughs> now says there are serious questions to answer. What changed? Yeah. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, may, I, know, I know he reads from these prepared sheets, but he should listen to what I actually said. So, so, since I commented on this matter last week, more information, including a statement, including a statement by the Minister Without Portfolio has entered the public domain, which is why it's right that we do establish the facts. And, and Mr Speaker, let me, let, me take, let me take a step back. Let me take a step back. Now, of course, of course, of course, the politically expedient thing to do would be for me, would be for me to have said that this matter must have been resolved by Wednesday at noon. But I believe in proper due process. That's why, that's why I appointed an independent adviser, and that's why the independent adviser is doing his job. But the opposition can't have it both ways. The shadow leader, his, also his party chair, both urged me and the government to appoint an independent adviser, and now he objects to that independent adviser doing their job. It's simple political opportunism, and everyone can see through it. We all know why the Prime Minister was reluctant to ask his party chair questions about family finances and tax avoidance. Yeah. <laughs> but but he, his, his failure his failure to sack him, when the whole country can see what's going on, shows how hopelessly weak he is. A Prime Minister overseeing chaos, overwhelmed at every turn. He can't say when ambulances will get to heart attack victims again. He can't say when the prison system will keep streets safe again. He can't even deal with tax avoiders in his own cabinet. Is he starting to wonder if this job is just too big for him? Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the difference between him and me is that I stand by my values and my principles even when it is difficult. When I disagreed fundamentally with the previous Prime Minister, I resigned from the government. But for four, but for four, but for four long years, he sat next to the member for Islington North. anti-Semitism ran rife yes. when his predecessor sided with our opponents. That's what's weak, Mr Speaker. He has no principles and just petty politics. 